Let's take a look at some of our agreements features. This is more than just an agreement. It's a way for you to add in in one document all of the things you might want to do with a client as they get started. So I would recommend making a template if this is your first time making an agreement. If you've already built one that you love, you can always turn it into a template as well. So let's take a look at our templates first. Um, we'll kind of walk through agreements this way. Um, this is also how you will make an agreement. So you'll start in workspace settings, then templates, and then you'll go to agreements. Um, you'll add a new version here. Um, right now we've got our agreements in beta and we have our agreements classic. I've got a whole nother video about agreements classic. If you want to check out our YouTube channel and search for agreements overview, uh, or you can uh, always click in the help center to find out more information. This video is going to be about this version two of agreements. It's currently in beta, uh, depending on when you're watching this, um, the, this, option may be a little bit different as we kind of move towards the new beta version. Um, we'll kind of skew this way. Okay. So uh, here you've got blank agreements. So if you love a fresh page and you want to build everything by yourself, totally understand blank agreement is the way to go. Uh, we also have a proposal that is going to pull up. Uh, we'll, I'll just show you because it's a video. That's why we're doing this. Uh, it'll pull up kind of a very uh, broad version of this proposal that you can fully edit. So uh, this just gives you a few like paddings and buffers and containers already built in so you don't have to start from actual scratch. So uh, this is just an image. This is your logo. Uh, we've got some... Uh, some text here. You can see that there are tokens used here as well. Here is just some static text. You can add in your packages. So this is going to be your project templates to show uh, here is how much it's going to cost. And uh, you can allow your clients to select things. Uh, this is a payment plan. So this allows you to collect a deposit upon signing. Uh, you can set up a midway check-in or you can add as many payment events as you like and then a final payment at the completion of the project. You can include integrated payment here as well. And you can add things like forms and discovery calls and of course, legal language to make this a contract that's legally binding as well. So this is all kind of standard in the proposal if you choose that. You can also create all of these things if you want to go kind of that blank canvas route. So each of these items lives here under the elements tab. There are several tabs. We're going to start here in elements. So under elements, you've got your containers. So as you add a container, you're going to get to choose uh, how many columns you have. You can make your container minimally a certain height if you want to add some space. You can change the background color, add a background image, uh, either for from our integrated Unsplash library or a custom image of your own. And again, you can choose how many columns you have, one, two, or three. Here is where you're going to add um, other elements. So that's going to allow you, if you click on this button, it's going to allow you to add other elements. Uh, basically, it's the same as this other tab that we were just looking at. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, but just in a smaller format. So you've got a horizontal divider and spacing just so you can kind of make things uh, layout a little more uh, easy to read. Um, you can add in an image. Uh, all of this text uh, is from this rich text editor. So if you want to just pull in a text box, you can do that. Here is what that's going to look like. And so uh, here is where you can type. You've got um, kind of your heading, your colors. Um, you can have this pull in your brand font as well. We'll come back around to that. The other important thing here to note is that you're going to want to use your tokens because this is an agreement template. And so here you can see there are lots of options for tokens. We've got a whole help doc written about these tokens as well. But essentially, this is going to get put into your agreement. And then when you send this template to a client, it's going to pull that information in to this agreement in the right place. So you never have to worry about going back in and going back through and like deleting old account client names or uh, 
anything like that, it will always pull up the right name pulling from their actual information. So um, I'll show you a good example of where those tokens are. Here we have this prepared for client name and by account name. So this client name, when you go to have this agreement with a client, uh, they are going to just see their name here. You'll be able to preview that when you send the, uh, the client their agreement. And then this is your account information. So when you see account information, that's where that is. Also in these tokens, I'll make a quick note here that all of these things that are related to your money, now that is going to pull based on this agreement. So depending on what your package prices are, it's going to pull up your uh, totals, your recurring totals, um, and tax as well. Okay. That's, uh, and here is your logo. So this is different from an image because this logo is gonna pull from your business account settings. That's set up in your workspaces and your preferences. Uh, I'm sorry, workspace settings, and then you click on my business. You can add your logo there and anywhere you place this logo, it will update. So if you do a rebrand somewhere down the road, you don't have to go back through and find all of the places that you've put your logo. Okay, now the modules. This is the fun bit where you get to pull in all of the other features that are going to integrate throughout Moxie. So legal terms, these are these contract terms. So you click and drag this in here. Within your legal terms, you're able to edit the way it looks. Uh, you can choose to include legal terms or you can just include these payment terms. Um, a quick note here, this was drafted by an attorney, but it's always good practice to have your own legal counsel review relevant business agreements. Um, you can add in things here in this text box if legal jargon is not your jam. However, if you are really into writing your own legal terms, you can always click this and convert this whole section to editable text. So that's about adding legal terms here. These services, this is going to be your pricing packages. So you can think about these as your project templates. If you've been in Moxie for a while, You've maybe created some projects, made those into templates, and that's the way you can think about this. There's a big overarching project with a price. You also have some tasks that fall underneath it. And in this case, the way we're going to think about these packages is that you're going to show your clients one big project with a a package total. So like how much it's going to cost for them to do that package. You can show them any tasks that you have underneath it. And you can also do these add-ons where, yes, this is the project template that you've created. And maybe you want to allow a client to optionally add on some more things, like maybe including some more assets or add on a, a, a an extra strategy session or whatever that looks like. So here's how we're going to set up those things. So here we've got our service services block, you'll click and drag from the elements here, click and drag this services block into here, and you'll see this block. The first time that you add a services block, you're going to get this sample package. So there's just one here. You can see I've pulled in a services block and it's going to pull in whatever packages I add to this block. So you can see here when I scroll down, this is all the image control that you have here. You can see in this block, I've just got this one package. Now I can pull in one of my other project templates. Those are created the same place that we started, except instead of going under agreement. So that would be workspace settings, templates, and then in, and then you go to projects to set up these project templates. So here you can see I've got all of these project templates that I've created. We're going to pull in this one. So under my uh, package here, this project template has not just the package. It also um, here we can show you if I want to click on the actual package here. You can see I've got this. Here is my fixed price amount. And then I also have some tasks underneath that are included with this project. So you can show your clients, okay, this is the project. Here's the amount that you're paying. And here are all of the things along with their due date if you have those set as well uh, under this project. So that's how I can pull in an existing project template into my package. Now, this is one block. So you'll want to think about this services block. Um, you can add in more packages to this services block. You can just have one package here in this services block. And now this specific block is going to be controlled by this section here where they can choose to select a single package or multiple packages just from this specific block. So someone can choose from this row multiple packages, or I can say they can only choose one of these two packages. And then I can say that that's required. They have to choose a single package uh, from this row of options. 
I can also choose to show this as a stacked instead of showing it in this row version, depending on how you like things to look. Now, see here, I've got a second row of packages. So this will be controlled by its own separate section here. So if I want someone to pick a package from just this row, I'll say single package. Yes, it's required. And then I'll say, oh, and you also have to choose one from this row. I'll say a single package and yes for this as well. If you wanted to treat these packages as extra things, uh, you could say you can select a single package or multiple packages, and then you would just make that not required. Now they could choose these packages in addition to choosing one of these packages. There are lots of ways that you can do add-on services as well. So you can see in this package, we've got um, a couple of add-ons here. So you're going to manage that with your product and service library. So if you want to add a new one, you can click this add product or service. You can see your existing product and service library or add more there. And then here for... Um, Here's an example of how your add-on will look. You can choose uh, if you want this to be an add-on. So that's going to show up with a toggle. It's not um, a requirement for this package to be selected. And you can choose if it is optional or if this add-on is also part of the package. So... <clears throat> And you can change the quantity here too. So let's say this is a strategy session and I'm going to offer as an add-on either an option for five strategy sessions or I'm going to do um, just one strategy session. And so we'll make that one and we'll make this amount the same. I'm going to make that an add-on and optional. And then we'll make this a little more clear where this is my five strategy session. So here are those add-ons. You can see now I've got the price here because this is five strategy sessions at $500. So here you can see, now I've got these toggles here. So when my client comes to see the agreement, they'll see, okay, here is the package name. And then this is the fixed price, $500 for this package. Oh, and I can add on these bonus strategy sessions. I can either choose to add five on or one on and then select this package. So lots and lots of ways to think about packages. It's built and designed to be super flexible to make this as, uh, as easy for you to use as possible and to work in every free business. We also can include your uh, meeting scheduler here. So uh, once you've created a meeting scheduler, you can click and drag to add in your meeting schedule. This drop down box to say, okay, this is uh, the meeting scheduler that I want to use. And you can opt to show this info panel, or you can just have it show up because you've described it maybe in some text already. You can have it just show up uh, here. Um, I will uh, show you one that actually has some available time. So now you can see your schedulers here. Your client will click through uh, the same way as it does in your meeting scheduler and choose to confirm a time to meet with you uh, before signing this agreement. So there is uh, what that looks like to add your meeting scheduler. You can also embed a form in this meeting scheduler. So, or in this agreement, I'm sorry. You can add a form uh, by doing this drop down, and now you can collect what information you want to from your client all while they are doing this agreement. No need to go back and say, hey, can you also fill this out? They're going to do that totally on this agreement. Um, so there is uh, your embedded forms. Um, this integrated payment, this is what is shown here. So if you've got a Stripe connection, you can have your client make that first payment right here before they even sign the agreement. This is the payment plan. You can see here, this is now split into several sections. So um, the first one, I want this to be due on signing. Here's that label. It will show up over here. And you'll choose the payment type, whether that's upon signature, at a milestone, or a preset date. Um, and then you can add multiple payment events. So if you want to break this down into four, you can have uh, different payment events here as well. And then you also have your final payment as well. So uh, you'll be able to break this down. So if you want your clients to pay 50% upfront and 50% midway through and nothing <clears throat> as their final payment at the completion of project, uh, you can do that as well. Where And then they will see this box on their invoices as well. So they'll be able to see, oh, I've paid this amount. Here's the payment I'm making. And here is what's going to be ultimately due. 
that's your payment plan. And uh, you can add in your signature block as well. So you'll need to add signers um, with your, uh, you'll add in your signature block and you'll have this add signers uh, button here. And you'll do that by dropping this down and clicking on signers. So you can see here is my signature. Uh, if you have multiple people in your account, uh, that will allow you to choose different folks as your signers. So you can add in uh, those team members who might also need to sign this agreement. You can add multiples or just one. And there's your signature. Um, let's spend some time uh, that covers all of these elements except for, <clears throat> excuse me, this accept button. Uh, if you want to choose uh, not to do a signature, but you're creating a quote, you'll use this accept button instead. You can design it over here as well. Again, uh, quick, quickly, any of the elements that you add, you can always delete them. Uh, click it to add it, uh, to edit it. And then you can click this delete button to remove anything that you've added that you didn't mean to. So that's the elements block. Uh, next, you can check out your settings. Uh, you can choose review the invoice before sending. You can add in an invoice template if you've got your uh, payment plan set up here. And you can also uh, choose a redirect. So once someone has signed this agreement, now you can choose where you want them to land after that agreement so they don't just get like a blank page and wonder, oh, did that work or did that not work? And then we also have this signature confirmation. So after they have signed, they'll also get this confirmation from you as well. Under styles, this is where you're going to manage the overall look of this with your fonts, your font color, the way you want your headings and paragraphs to look. That's all under styles. Um, if you do have a custom font, you're able to add that in your preferences. So you'll start in workspace settings and then preferences in there. You can add your custom fonts. Here's signers that we just looked at. You can see I've got my signature here. Again, if you've got multiple folks on your account, you'll be able to add whichever signer for this specific template you want to have. And lastly, you have your pages. So you can see this document is fairly long. And so we're going to add in names for each of these document, each of these pages. I can choose a canvas color. I can choose a page size and which orientation I want to use as well and toggle off this page shadow. When your client views this agreement, they're going to be able to use these titles as navigation to be able to get through each of the pages of your agreement. So that is agreements. From here, you'll save your template and uh, you can always use this template with a client. So let's head into our clients and you can see here, I'm gonna start an agreement from my save template here. Uh, let's choose, this is not the one I just created. Sorry, I should have just actually saved it to show you. Uh, I'll show you this version of the save template here. So I've got my template and you can see here all of those areas where I had tokens. Now those are all filled in. I, I've added a bunch of images here. Here's a, a project block. And then here are some extra add-ons that my clients are able to choose. Here's payment. You can see um, based on what they choose. So if I choose both of these and I want to do these meetings, um, I can do that as well. And you can see my payment now has updated to reflect that um, deposit is now 25% of all of these things that I've just chosen. Um, and then you can see I've got a form fill here. I can book a meeting here as well. When I am ready to share this, we're going to make sure we add in our signers. So right now I just have myself signing, which doesn't make for a good agreement because you also want your client to sign. So now I'm going to add in uh, under signers, I'll add my unlimited clients, uh, which is the title of my client here. I'll add in their signer. Um, if you have multiple contacts for that client, you can add one or both. You can see here, I can add both of my clients as signers here as well. So now when I go to share this document, I'm going to finalize it. And when I go to share, <clears throat> oh, I'm going to also, it's going to alert you that you need to sign your document. You have a signature saved as a PNG. You'll be able to click and drag that into this box and that will save as your very lovely signature. Um, so we'll, I'll go ahead and sign this here. 
and there's my initials. So I'll sign and accept this. So now I'm going to share this, finalize it. And I can share this via a link. Um, and you'll see here, each of your signers is going to get a specific link to sign. And so you'll send this version to whichever of your uh, signers that is, and you get it. So you'll get uh, two versions or three or one, depending on how many signers you have. And then they'll be able to see over here, you can see here are my page names. So you can use this as a, uh, that's clickable so that they can kind of your clients can kind of navigate through your entire documents. I know it is a ton of things to see in agreements, but we're so excited and so proud of the way these things came out. So I invite you to explore, ask questions. This uh, question mark here uh, is where you can always ask for help or have questions. I do want to show you one more thing. As you have an agreement, if you create an agreement and you love it for uh, your clients, you can always click the these three dots and choose to save that agreement as a template. And then um, you can always go in and edit that to uh, not have to recreate an agreement that you already love.